None of us can see God until we see him through the cross. None of us can approach God until we approach him through the cross. None of us can come close to God until we come close to him through the cross. There's something very important about these passages of Scripture. It says in verse three, Zacchaeus sought to see who Jesus was because he was short of stature. So he climbed up into a sycamore tree. There's something about this word short. You know, there's only one other place in this Bible where this word is used. There's only one other place. And you know where it is in the New Testament. The other place is in Romans, chapter three, verse twenty three. And you probably know what it says. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The beautiful revelation that we can get from Zacchaeus's life is that he realized he was short. He realized he fell short. And you know what he did? He did the only thing you can do when you realize that you've fallen short of the glory of God. He went up into the tree. He went up to a tree to see him who was passing. In other words, you and me have more in common with Zacchaeus. You might be the tallest man on earth, but you and me have more in common with Zacchaeus about being short because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That word short means less than we've fallen to become inferior to God's ultimate intention for our lives. We've fallen short of that. And it says he went up into a tree. He needed a tree to see Jesus. You know what? We fall short like Zacchaeus without a tree, but only through a tree can Zacchaeus truly see Jesus as he really is only through a tree. If he's looking at Jesus through the lens of other people, he won't see Jesus correctly. If he's looking at Jesus through the lens of religion, he won't see Jesus correctly. But when he looks at Jesus from the tree, when he looks at Jesus through a tree, it is only through a tree that we can know Jesus. It is only through the tree he can reach us. It is only through the tree, through the cross. It is only through the cross we can see him clearly. And it is only through the cross that he can see us. It's only through the cross. It's only through the tree. None of us can see God until we see him through the cross. None of us can approach God until we approach him through the cross. None of us can come close to God until we come close to him through the cross. Zacchaeus was short. He was like us, fallen short of the glory of God. But when you go to that tree, when you come to that tree, when you come to that cross, when you come to where Jesus' blood is shed, now you can see who he really is. Now you can see what God's really like. He really wants a relationship with you. He wants closeness with you through the tree, through the tree, because he was in the tree, because the keys is in the tree. He got an invitation from Jesus because he came to the tree. Jesus noticed him because he came to the tree. Jesus recognized him because Jesus Because Zacchaeus came to the tree, Jesus looked at him. Because Jesus came, because Zacchaeus came to the tree, Jesus called him by name. You know, everyone loves to hear two things in this in their life. Everybody loves to hear these two things. They love to hear their name and their opinion. Everybody has an opinion of everything. You know why? Because we're insecure. We think we have to. You don't have to have an opinion about everything. You don't have to be put your two cents in. You know what you got to be? Be humble. Work on your relationship with God. Because he's calling your name, you don't have to call it yourself. We don't have to promote ourselves. Jesus knows us. He calls Zacchaeus by name. And then Jesus speaks to Zacchaeus because he's in the tree. He says, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. You see me through the tree. I see you through the tree. Now come. And Jesus said, I want to come to your house. In fact, he says, I need to come to your house. He says, I must stay at your house. In other words, this sinner 
Jesus noticed when he got in the tree, Jesus noticed him. When he got into the tree, Jesus recognized him. When he got into the tree, Jesus looked at him. When he got into the tree, Jesus spoke to him. When he got into the tree, Jesus desired him. When he got into the tree, Jesus accepted him. And when he got into the tree, Jesus said, I'm going to stay with him. That's what happened. Every human needs these seven things in their life. They need to be noticed. We have a need to be noticed. And the reason we want to be noticed by others is because we're not sure that we're noticed by God. We're not secure in being noticed by God. But everyone has the need. It's a real need to be noticed. It's real. It's nothing bad about it until you're using it. You're looking for it from everybody else rather than from God. The only one that you should even care notices you is Jesus. When you know that, when you have him noticing you, you don't need to be noticed by anybody else. You know, this world is in a popularity war. They're in a popularity contest. Everybody's trying to get more noticed, more recognized, more followers, more money. It's all rooted in insecurity. It's all rooted in falling short of the glory of God. It's all rooted in these seven needs that we're going to the wrong well. We're we're drinking from the wrong well. The well of social media is not your relationship. With, that's not where you get your relationship with God from. The well of other people's approval, other people's acceptance, other people's recognition of you, other people's affirmation of you. There's a place for that when you're not addicted to it. And when you have already have it from God and you know you have it from God, then people can affirm you and it won't go to your head. But. These seven needs are in our lives. We have a need to be noticed. Jesus noticed you. We have a need to be recognized. Jesus recognizes you. We have a need to be looked at. Jesus looks at you. We have a need to be spoken to. Jesus speaks to you. We have a need to be desired. Jesus desires you. We have a need for acceptance. Jesus accepts you. And we have a need for closeness with God. Jesus says, I must stay at your house. Staying means. Long term. He's staying. I love that. Zacchaeus is like us in so many ways. You cannot go unnoticed by God when you come to the cross, when you come to Jesus. You cannot go unnoticed by God. You cannot go unrecognized by God. Oh, that's Zacchaeus. He knows you. Oh, that's Bobby. Oh, that's Mary. Oh, that's Billy Bob. Whoever. He knows us. He recognizes us. He notices you. He recognizes you. He looks at you. You know, that word look at is. If you go deep into that, the reason we want to be looked at is not because we want people to see our flaws. We want to be looked at because we want to be admired. We want to be admired. Nobody wants to be disliked or or rejected or thought of in a bad way. We want to be admired. And Jesus looks at you and he admires you. How do you know he admires you? Because he wouldn't want what he doesn't admire. He wouldn't embrace what he doesn't admire. He wouldn't bring close what he doesn't admire. We all want admiration. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's the reason we look in the mirror every day. We have to realize we look at it every day, multiple times a day, multiple times before we even are noticed by anybody else. We want to make sure that I'm presenting myself in a way that it gives me the best chance of being admired, admired to be hired for a job, admired to be you know, thought of on a, for a date, admired to be someone who somebody wants to marry, admired to be somebody who wants to be my friend. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be admired, 
but it's wrong to, to, to seek for it elsewhere until you first seek it from Jesus and realize he notices you. He recognizes you. He looks at you and admires you. He speaks to you. He desires you. He accepts you. He stays with you. He's never wanting for you to be alone another day in your life. He wants to stay with you. This is the ultimate purpose for which we were born to be in this close walk with God, this intimate relationship with God. The Father himself notices you. The Father himself recognizes you. The Father himself admires you. The Father himself speaks to you. The Father himself desires you. The Father himself accepts you. The Father himself stays with you. The Father himself wants to live this close walk with you. That's why he shed Jesus blood was shed. That's why God was willing to put Jesus on the cross. That's why when Jesus blood was shed, the father ripped the curtain that separated man from God and it is forever ripped and there is no more separation anymore. But God delivered us. He delivered us from being separated from him. And now we are going to pull down the stronghold of this illusion that we're separated from him. This illusion that when we fail, somehow God puts us in the penalty box and he puts us on the sideline and he says, no, I can't use you. Everybody that was messed up are the ones he put in the game. He, um, he, doesn't put a, he doesn't put us out of the game when we mess up. Everybody that ever got put in the game by God got put in the game after messing up. Put in the game, put in the game while he was messing up. Put in the game and then messed up. Listen, we got to realize if God can put us in the game, God can, if God wants to put us in the game, he wants to put you in the game. He wants to put me in the game, the game of life, the game of walking with God. Listen, he notices you. He recognizes you. He speaks to you. He admires you. He desires you. He stays with you. He accepts you. He accepts us as we are. And then he goes to work on, on us. What if he went to work on us? and then accepted us. No, that's not God's way. That's not unconditional love. He says in Revelation chapter one, verse five and six. First, he loved us. Then he washed us. Then he made us kings and priests. First, he loved us. Then he washed us. Jesus does not love what he washes. Jesus washes what he loves. We have to get a hold of that. He washes what he loves. He first loved us, so there's no strings attached. If you thought, oh, I have to, he has to wash me and then he'll love me. That's 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 tarnished. That's a tarnished God. That's a God. That's a tarnished love. That's not an unconditional love. That's a manipulative love. Well, I'll love you as soon as I wash you. No, he loved us. That's why he washed us. That's why he made us kings and priests. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I want you to know how grateful I am. And if you want more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that we can stay connected. I also want to invite you to join me live every Sunday right here on the Gregory Dickow YouTube channel for our Sunday morning worship experience featuring music and worship from Life Changers Worship and a powerful word from the Lord Jesus Christ to you. We go live every Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Time. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the notifications bell so you don't miss it. I can't wait to see you next time. God bless.